Awesome. Thank you. So I am going to uh, put a um, handout in the chat for anyone here on Zoom, and I'll be visually showing the rest of you um, what it looks like so you can get an idea. Um, this is interactive, so hopefully you have uh, something to write on uh, to support you in this process. So I'm Kelly Fox, and I am a fear mastery coach. Um, and I say that because that is our focus and our training is on helping you be fearless. So today I'm going to share a tool with you that is all about getting you moving forward. So if you've ever find yourself stuck procrastinating, avoiding, um, anything like that, this tool is going to help you keep moving and um, get through those, those barriers that might be holding you back, which is all fear. So um, the tool that I'm sharing today is called Stretch, Risk, Die. And uh, don't worry, you don't actually die. It's, uh, it's an emotional uh, fear of that. But um, this is what it looks like visually. So it's kind of like a, a bullseye. And in the middle is your comfort zone. And that's not necessarily what is comfortable. That is what you're currently doing. So comfortable or not, it's what you're currently choosing to do. Um, and uh, the next step out is the stretch zone. And those are things that you've done before, but you're not currently doing. So maybe... Uh, Last year, you were going to the gym a lot. This year, you're not. So it's also called the beat up zone because we tell ourselves, why aren't we doing it? We did it before. So why can't we make ourselves do it now? Um, and then the next step out is the risk zone. And that is um, something we may have not done before. We don't know if we'll be successful. We're not sure exactly how to accomplish it. Um, we might need to ask for help, which can be scary sometimes. And the next zone out is the die zone. And those are those things that are so far from where we are that we just, we can't even see how we get there. We feel like um, we would just die if we had to do them. And so um, as you can see, there's a little there's a line um, that kind of gets a little bit bigger as you get out of the comfort zone. And those barriers are fear. So that fear gets bigger and bigger as we step out. And our fear does that because its number one job is to keep us safe. And when we're doing something that it feels isn't safe, it's going to wake up and it's going to tell you, hey, this isn't something we want to do. And that shows in procrastination and avoiding and all of those things that we just don't like that we do. Um, inconsistency is one I hear a lot. Um, and so this tool is going to help you move past that. So I want all of you to think of a goal that you have, um, something that's in front of you that you've maybe been thinking about doing, uh, you uh, haven't done it yet, you may not be sure on what those next steps are, or you're sure what those next steps are, but you haven't been able to uh, get to them. So I want you to think of what that number one goal is. I probably can't see what this says. Um, think of what that number one goal is, and then think what are three steps that would get you towards that goal. And we wanna think of steps that are in that risk zone. And hopefully your goal is maybe a risk at least, um, and maybe in the die zone, maybe something that's a bit scary to think about achieving. And then um, I want you to go back to that, to that diagram and plot out, where is that goal? Is that goal in your uh, die zone? Is it in your risk zone? And where are those steps? Where are those steps? And what zone do they, uh, do they uh, live in? And then once you have that, we can then move forward on how you uh, move forward and start stepping into those, those tasks and what you can do and how you can break them down into smaller steps that kind of baby step you towards that risk zone. And then your comfort zone will expand 
And those things that once were stretches will now be in your comfort zone. Those things that once were risks will be in your stretch zone. And those things that once were dies will be in your risk zone. And as your comfort zone continues to expand, those dies keep coming closer and closer until you find that achieving your goal has become something not so scary. So this is the tool that I want to share with you today. Is anyone willing to um, speak up and share what your goal is? And I can demonstrate with you right here how we work this tool. Anyone? Hmm. All right, awesome. Uh, is that Brian? I'll be, oh yeah, just because I'm supposed to be the fearless leader of this group. So it's nobody All else. right, sounds great. So what is a goal that you have that um, you would like to achieve? Uh, running a full Ironman so I could be as cool as Eric. All right, exciting. Okay, so what are three steps that you all need to take to prepare yourself for the Ironman? So it's interesting because like I, I've done a half Ironman, so I feel like I can easily survive a full Ironman. I just need to train and get in the place. So I feel like I'm in the stretch or the second zone there kind of a thing. If you ask me like, what's my die one, it's like probably I would never jump out of an airplane. You know what I mean? Like I don't have any desire to do that whatsoever. So, but I've already signed up for two triathlons this year, so I'm well on my way to training and getting back to this place. And uh, Eric's going to go run with me. Awesome. So you got a buddy to run with you. So a little bit of accountability, right? Because you want to be able to keep up and you want to be able to um, finish the race. Mm -hmm. So you have that, you have that uh, support system set up. So that's great. Uh, and then the training. So the training sounds like it's in your comfort zone or is it a little bit of a stretch? The short, easy runs and swims are no problem. It's any, anything, you know, that longer distance that, you know, you just got to find the time really and suffer through it. <laughs> yeah. So the training is maybe a, a stretch, comfort zone, stretch zone. So maybe there's some uh, support that you can reach out for that. Maybe it's not training on your own, but scheduling uh, that training with someone else uh, so that you take that time to go and do the laps or the bicycle riding or the, uh, the running, right? Um, what's another, another step that you have in front of you? Um, I'm not sure, probably getting it getting a few more swim lessons to get that breathing down pat better, you know, actually signing up for the triathlons. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. spend 600 bucks on a registration to go and torture yourself. It's a lot of money. So. Yeah. And that motivates you to get ready for it. Right. Cause you don't want to uh, sign up for it, put that money down and then uh, not actually do the race. That's right. Right. So what has kept you from going and getting those swim lessons to get your breathing down and registering? Is it just the money or is there anything else going on? Uh, single dad life. I have a five-year-old, so that puts uh -huh. your training plans big time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe there's the step of arranging childcare. That's right. Or, uh -huh. Here's people. Huh? looking for volunteers. Yeah, yeah, and there may be some out there, right? But it's it may be a little a little scary to ask someone to do that. Yeah. Right? So there's a little hesitation there. So uh ways that we can break down is making a list, right? Of those who those people are that you want to contact um and then arranging somehow to meet up with them and see how willing they are to do that. Maybe having a couple of people, so it's not just one person that you're depending on, um, and different things like that. So there's ways of breaking those steps down so they're not something that we avoid doing, right? Um, with, the, with the swimming lessons, maybe it's asking around, maybe other people who do triathlons or Ironmans, who did you go to? 
to support you with getting these breathing skills down or swimming skills down that help you perform that race, you know, at your best ability. And, uh, and then contacting those people and seeing which one resonates with you most, which one do you feel um, is going to give you those results that you're wanting. So there's different ways that we can break those steps down so that we start moving forward on it, even if we're not actually doing the scary thing yet, we're preparing ourselves for, we're inching forward. How do, do, do any of those things sound supportive? Absolutely. Yeah. I appreciate, appreciate the advice. Yeah. And did anything else come to mind while we were talking that you could do? I think, I think it's, sorry, they're making coffee here. So. Huh? Oh, I can't hear you anymore. Yeah, they're making coffee right now, so oh. I have to wait a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so while we're waiting a second, hopefully the rest of you here have been able to think about that goal. You've been able to think about what those steps are. You've been able to think of how to possibly break them down into smaller steps so that you can also baby step your way towards these things that you have maybe been putting off, uh, that you've been avoiding, that you've been kind of racking your brain or thinking about for a little bit longer uh, than necessary or whatever it may be that fear is showing up and saying, hey, do we really want to do this? Uh, does it really make sense? Um, you know, do we really have the time? Do we have the money? Um, that's getting you to step back from and avoid the, the thing that you're really wanting to do. Uh, so, um, I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I hope that that supports you in moving towards your goal. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, uh, I think I've known a lot of that stuff, but I like how succinctly you put it with the diagram. 